Welcome to the Human Skeleton, and I'm your professor, Dr. Jerry McNally. So, here we go. The skeletal system has many different functions, one of which is support. It is going to support and house um, some of the organs of special senses, such as the sense of vision. It houses the eyes. Uh, the sense of smell we'll find in the upper nasal cavity. Uh, the the olfactory epithelium, again, which is part of the sense of smell. It'll house um, the tongue. Uh, that's the sense of taste. It also supports uh, some of the organs of digestion, such as the teeth. And the skeleton also helps to protect many organs. If we look at the skull, the skull is going to protect the brain. The um, rib cage is going to protect the lungs. The sternum or breastbone is going to protect the heart. And if we look down at the pelvic cavity, that helps protect some of the organs of uh, reproduction. Now, another function is movement. While the bones don't themselves move, they do provide attachment points for muscles, and they do act as levers to allow those muscles to have very proficient uh, movement and um, very proficient uh, function. Also, the bones are a site of storage. Some of the things we store in bone is minerals. One of the main minerals is calcium. Uh, we have to have a certain calcium blood level. And if we don't maintain that certain level of calcium, um, we can have problems with the heart. Uh, we can have problems with the muscles. Uh, basically, most of the cells in the body require calcium in some form or another. And so if we're not able to get uh, that calcium that we need, one of the places that we can get it from is from the bones. And when we talk about cells, uh, bone cells, we'll see that there's a specific cell that will actually strip away some of that bone, um, dissolve that mineral, and put it into the bloodstream where we can utilize that calcium. Another thing that it stores is fat. In the long bones, such as the femur or thigh bone, uh, as well as uh, many of the other long bones, we have a hollow area in the shaft um, that's called the medullary cavity. And inside there we have bone marrow, more specifically yellow bone marrow. And the yellow bone marrow is yellow because of its fat content. And that is a source of energy. Now, in other parts of the bone, we have what's called red bone marrow. And the red bone marrow's function is uh, for blood cell production. So our red and white blood cells are actually produced by the bone. Now, we can classify bones according to their shape. And we have long bones, short bones, flat bones, skinny bones. Oh, I'm sorry, not skinny bones. Cross that off. Uh, sesamoid bones and irregular bones. So let's take a look at long bones. Long bones we're going to find in the upper and lower extremities. As you see, they are longer than they are wide. Uh, we find them like in the femur, the tibia, the fibula, uh, the radius, the ulna, the humerus. And if you're scratching your head, don't worry. We're going to learn all of those names as the course progresses. Uh, but these are long bones. Short bones are going to be more like in the, the wrist. Um, those are the carpal bones or down in the foot around your ankle. Um, those are the tarsal bones. Those bones tend to be more cube shaped. Then we have flat bones. Examples of those would be like the ribs. The ribs are flat. Uh, the sternum or breastbone is flat. Some of the bones of the skull, especially those along the, the side of the skull, are going to be flat bones. And the scapula, or shoulder blade, is a flat bone. Now, sesamoid bones are, well, have you ever had one of these burgers that are two all-beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesamoid seed bun? I'm sorry, sesame seed bun? Well, sesamoid means seed or seed shaped 
And if we take a look at this, this is the patella, which is the largest sesamoid bone in the body. You can see it's kind of seed shaped. So think about that sesame seed. It's kind of redundant when you think about it though. Sesamoid or sesame means seed. So that's a seed seed. Okay, never mind. Uh, but anyway, so sesamoid um, bones tend to be in te embedded in uh, tendons and they help uh, give a little extra leverage. Uh, actually at the base of uh, your big toe there's a couple of sesamoid bones there as well and when you think about it you need quite a bit of leverage as you push off when you walk. Uh, the big toe is pushing off and so again just at the base of that big toe um, you'll find a couple of sesamoids and we'll be discussing those later. And then irregular bones would be like the vertebrae. Um, also some of the bones in the skull, uh, such as the sphenoid bone, which again we'll take a look at later, but it crosses or spans the width of the skull. It's kind of a bat or butterfly shape. Uh, that's also an irregular bone. Okay, quiz time. Let's see if you can guess if it is a long bone, a short bone, or an irregular bone. So if we look at uh, the wrist bones down here, these are the carpal bones. Are they long, short, or irregular bones? Okay, you guessed short bones. That's correct. Those are short bones. Okay, let's take a look at these bones. These are the metacarpal bones. Are they long, short, or irregular? If you guessed long bones, you're correct. Okay, let's go all the way up here. And um, are these going to be long bones, short bones, or irregular bones? Okay, some of you have said short bones. Um, nope, I'm sorry, but they are long bones. It is longer than it is wide. Okay, let's go to the very tips. Okay, I'm hearing people say short bones. Nope, those are still long bones. They are still longer than they are wide. I know I was being a little tricky here, but hopefully that'll help you. And um, we'll see you in the next lecture.